You know what's kind of cool? Like I learned that rosemary is a preservative. You can use rosemary in like turkey breasts or chicken breasts. And when you go to Costco or you go to these stores, and I talk about this in my grocery hauls, like I, I'm always proud of brands that are using rosemary and stuff like that as a preservative. But then you still have companies that load their products up with preservatives that are common and commonly known as not being very good. I mean, we can argue all day and night about different metabolic actions and how the body is like burning fat and using fuel. But something that is, if you want to, I'll call it a toxin, something that is a toxin is still a toxin. It doesn't matter how you're trying to lose weight or get in better shape. A toxin is still a toxin. So I wanted to address sodium benzoate, potassium sorbate, and sodium nitrite specifically, and then give a little nod to titanium dioxide. Okay, now titanium dioxide is not a preservative, but we're still gonna to touch on it. So the idea behind sodium benzoate, potassium sorbate, and sodium nitrite, or specifically in the world of sodium benzoate, is it's a preservative. It's there to kind of have an antimicrobial effect, right? So you can have something be shelf stable. You're gonna see it in a lot of different kinds of energy drinks. You're gonna see it in things that uh, might have a little bit of something that would go rancid in it. So it needs something to kind of stabilize that. I understand that premise. But when you start looking at how it's affecting your gut microbiome, that's where we have to be really cautious. Okay, there's direct effects that we can look at with things, but I wanna focus mainly on the microbiome. So there was a study that was published in the journal Folia Microbiota, and this looked at sodium benzoate, potassium sorbate, and sodium nitrite. Okay, and what it determined was that when you had even small amounts of these ingredients, it affected specific strains of your gut bacteria, okay? Now, in this case, we have gut bacteria that can have anti-inflammatory properties, okay? That can indirectly modulate inflammation within the body. And then we have bacteria that can be pro-inflammatory. Now, neither one is necessarily good or bad, right? We need some levels of inflammation. If you get sick or if you stub your toe, right? You need an inflammatory response. I'm not saying that's bad, but we need a delicate balance there. And when you have these ingredients, it's been shown Shown that they diminish the growth and they kind of hinder the ability for those good bacteria that are associated with anti-inflammatory effects to grow. First of all, you have Clostridium tyrobutyricin and you also have Lactobacillus paracasei, which are pretty known to be good bacteria. Now, full disclaimer here, we say good bacteria, we say bad bacteria, but we only know like the very tip of the iceberg, right? what might be a bad bacteria might still have good properties. And we always need a balance of, let's call it good and evil within the gut, right? Because it's kind of, they all still feed and cross feed and have these reactions. But what we do know is what they are doing outside of the gut. So bacteria, again, like this Clostridium and this, this Paracasei, these are important. Now, the other thing with this study, what they noticed is when sodium benzoate was consumed, even in small amounts, is it allowed higher inflammatory response bacteria to stay alive. So it was hindering the growth of anti-inflammatory bacteria, but it was allowing the growth and just the regular survival of the bacteria that were associated with pro-inflammation. That's where we run into this problem, because over time, think about the dysbiosis that that would develop. That's a big problem. One of the things that I think we all need to be paying attention to, especially as we you know, get a little bit older, is that our bodies know what kind of bacteria we should really have. And if we have a lot of diversity, we have more flexibility for our bodies to have uniqueness, right? So if you have a wide blanket of bacteria to choose from and you have a specific need with your body, your body is going to start having the species that you need because you have a pretty symbiotic relationship with our bacteria. That's the way it works, right? In fact, there was even a study published in Nature Metabolism that found that as people got older, bacteria uniqueness was more important than diversity, showing that the body's ability to be flexible with what bacteria were in the gut was much more important than just having diversity. But diversity is sort of the starting line with that. So when you have something like a sodium benzoate or a potassium sorbate that's affecting that, then you're, you're hindering the uniqueness. Now, I wish I could say that like taking probiotics and prebiotics is gonna you know, completely negate the effects of that. But the fact is when you start having things that are this powerful when they're negative, 
yeah, you can't really undo that a whole lot. I still do recommend taking a probiotic. The one that I recommend is called Seed. I put it down below in the description. You can get 15% off if you check them out. And also, they are a big supporter and sponsor of this channel. So Seed is a daily symbiotic. So their capsule is really interesting. It has a capsule inside of a capsule, which is pretty unique technology. So it kind of has the right staging in terms of the delivery of the probiotics and the prebiotics. That way it can survive a little bit more of the hydrochloric acid and kind of that hostile like stomach acid, right? So really interesting stuff. And they have really done a lot of research with that. So highly recommend that you check them out. There's a link down below. Again, you can save 15% off if you use that link. And a big thanks to Seed for the continued support on this channel as well. Okay, the other one that I've talked about before that I need to address is titanium dioxide. All right, titanium dioxide is not a preservative, but a lot of times you're gonna see it in tandem with preservatives. Okay, it gives like a sheen to foods. So like think like uh, foods that are white and shiny, some gums, some mintos, some toothpaste, things like that, right? Mints, you're gonna see it a lot. And what titanium dioxide does in the body, outside of sort of the other genetic pieces that we know about, it creates what's called a biofilm. And with our gut, again, we're looking at diversity, we're looking at uniqueness, a biofilm surrounds the bacteria within our gut with like a protective layer, which sounds like it would be a good thing, except it's not encompassing all of our gut, it's encompassing some of our gut. So I want you to imagine this, you have a forest, okay, and you have um, a bunch of wolves that are in that forest, and you have a bunch of squirrels that are in that forest, and the wolves eat the squirrels, and it's kind of the natural ecosystem for the wolves to eat some of the squirrels, and the squirrels eat the nuts, and it's kind of like a natural circle of life in that case. Okay, but now I want you to imagine for a second that uh, a bunch of the squirrels were protected in this little, like, I don't know, hermetically sealed bubble that the wolves couldn't get to them. Okay, but not all of them. So some of the wolves were able to eat some of the squirrels, but a lot of the squirrels were protected. You could see how that would cause a die off of some of the wolves. Not that the wolves are bad or the squirrels are good or bad. The point is, is by protecting a given species, we are causing an issue, like there's no more diversity. Now you're gonna have an abundance of squirrels as the wolves start to die off, and the tide's, tide's gonna turn, everything's gonna get weird. So that's happening within our gut too, and titanium dioxide and biofilms are a big problem with that. And when you start looking at other instances of biofilm, like, you know, there's a lot of researchers that are trying to investigate ways to break down biofilm. So although it's kind of weird and a little bit kind of nuancy to look at it again, if you start paying attention to these preservatives and these additives, I think you can take a little bit better care of your gut microbiome and leave it to yourself. If you feel better, great. If you don't, I think you're still doing the right thing. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.